Warhammer Fantasy as a franchise that isn't really known for having great video games. This could be because it's much less popular than Warhammer 40k and Games Workshop just doesn't want to invest in it, or because the game development studios that pick the franchise up generally just don't do a good job at making their games. Many of the things that I value, such as immersion, gameplay, and player agency are things that are rarely prioritized in Warhammer Fantasy games. I'm Jeffikus and I'm addicted to Warhammer games, but I'm not so attached to the franchise that I'll blindly play and recommend a game that that I think is bad, so I'm here to recommend only the best of the best. I've narrowed down the entire history of the franchise's video games to just two. If you love the setting of Warhammer Fantasy, or you want a good introduction to the setting, these are the games that I would absolutely recommend for you. And these games are Vermintide 2 and Total War Warhammer. Let's get into what makes them so good. Warhammer Vermintide 2 is a first-person co-op horde RPG, which is an extremely niche classification. In layman's terms, it's a lot like Left 4 Dead, but in the Warhammer setting and with RPG mechanics. You and three other players dive into mission after mission, fighting off hordes of bad guys while trying to survive and get to the end of the level. What sets Vermintide apart from similar games is its gameplay, progression, and its setting or story. The gameplay in Vermintide is insanely good. It has one of the best melee combat systems in a first-person game, and it features the kind of playstyle variety you only see in RPGs. Vermintide's combat features a lot of mechanics that you probably see in other games, such as dodging, blocking, parrying, pushing, light attacks, heavy attacks, health, stamina, and ammunition. As such, combat in this game might appear simple, but it actually takes a good amount of time and practice to really master. You can really tell the difference between someone who has mastered this system and someone who's newer to the game. There are so many intricacies, like knowing which combo is going to best deal with a horde versus which attacks will crack open a heavily armored enemy, or knowing which special enemies you need to either dodge or push, and what attacks can actually be blocked from elite enemies or monstrosities. You even need to get accustomed to the game's various sound cues, which creates an extremely immersive experience that you just don't find in other games. Everything about Vermintide's gameplay feels fluid and brutal, which is fitting given that this is a Warhammer game. Additionally, you get to select from 5 heroes and 20 different careers that each offer unique ways to engage with the game. Want to focus on melee combat? Play as the Grail Knight. Want to be a spellcaster? light rats on fire with a battle wizard. Want to lean into ranged combat? Shoot everything with the outcast engineer. Vermintide hits a good balance between simplicity and complexity with its build crafting, limiting you to specific weapons and talents based on the career that you want to play, but challenging you to figure out which stats best benefit your chosen weapons and talents. You can build to be good at a very specific thing, such as boss killing, or you can include elements in your loadout that will allow you to assist the team with things such as special sniping or horde clearing. Next, I want to talk about the game's progression, which is another aspect of the game that has kept me coming back again and again over the years. The more you play the game, the more you get out of it when it comes to higher quality loot and cooler cosmetics. But what I want to hone in on is the progression of the player's skill level, also known as getting good. It's extremely satisfying to get better at this game because it uses an AI director to randomly throw varieties of enemies at you, which could be really brutal to deal with at times. But if you're good enough, it's possible to deal with anything that the director throws at you, even if you're solo. The road to getting good can be rough in Vermintide due to the random nature of its AI director, but I find that it's a satisfying form of personal progression that other games can't quite match in the same way. Lastly, the setting and story of Vermintide deserves a lot of praise. No other Warhammer game pays attention to all the finer details of the Warhammer world. The game features missions in all sorts of environments such as dwarven cities and icy mountains, pillaged villages in the Empire, or even ancient elven ruins hidden away in forests. Each location shows you the destruction that the forces of chaos wreak on the world and makes you feel the weight of the end times that the world is experiencing. The developers haven't just done a great job with their visual storytelling, but they've also done a phenomenal job with sprinkling lore into the dialogue between the heroes and your party. Everything from the rumors of various battles that are occurring around the world to how the characters treat each other based on their heritage or background is spot on in regards to the greater Warhammer narrative that is being told here. This presentation style has become my favorite as the story isn't told to you, it's experienced through gameplay which is akin to something you would see in a game like Elden Ring or Dark Souls. The game doesn't use cutscenes because it simply doesn't have to rely on them to tell its story. Where Vermintide can be very up close and personal, Total War Warhammer provides a completely different yet high quality experience. When I talk about Total War Warhammer, I'm referring to all three iterations of the game as you basically need to own all three games and arguably every content pack that the game has to offer in order to get the best experience possible. Each game offers its own campaign and variety of playable factions, but in Total War Warhammer 3, you get to play Immortal Empires, which I would consider to be the pinnacle of Warhammer fantasy content, which goes as far as 
to exceed even the tabletop game. One can argue that Total War Warhammer makes for a poor Total War game when compared to the other games in the strategy genre, but it's arguably the best Warhammer fantasy game ever created. Total War Warhammer blends turn-based and real-time strategy together to create a masterpiece presentation of what Warhammer fantasy is all about. Its turn-based elements include expanding and upgrading your territory, trade and diplomacy, and utilizing effects unique to your specific faction to influence the world. You experience the game's real-time strategy when you do battle with an enemy army. These battles test your game knowledge of Total War's mechanics such as unit counters, and allows you to pull off game-changing maneuvers by skillfully micromanaging your army in ways that finesse your opponent. I'd say that what has always been the best thing about Total War Warhammer is the sheer quantity of factions and legendary lords that you have access to. Each faction and each lord offers their own unique playstyle in regards to both the game's turn-based strategy and real-time strategy aspects, not to mention their own perspective of the setting's lore and story. There are factions that allow you to focus on macro-managing what is happening on the overall map, and there are factions that ignore all of that and just focus on combat. There are even variances within factions that allow you to specialize how you tackle combat, such as which lures of magic you're bringing with your army or what units you're going to use. Although the game specializes in delivering in its sheer quantity of playstyles, it doesn't sacrifice quality anywhere. Each faction is going to deliver its own unique experience, whether you're looking at it from a gameplay or story perspective. This in itself has created enough content for the game to be replayed for thousands of hours, and that's not even considering multiplayer. I believe that this game is so good that it's surpassed the tabletop game in terms of sheer engagement. Total War Warhammer has both introduced more people to Warhammer Fantasy faster than the tabletop game ever could, and it has retained more interest than the tabletop game ever could. There are always tens of thousands of people playing the game at any given time, and the game has a thriving community on social media, such as YouTube, with numerous content creators delivering an unending stream of content to millions of active viewers. You just don't see the same level of engagement with Warhammer Fantasy in any other medium, and if you're a fan of the setting, you're doing an injustice to yourself if you haven't experienced the game. If I had to recommend a starting point, I'd say that Total Warhammer 3 offers a really good variety of factions, and the other games in DLC always go on sale, so be on the lookout for that. And if you're like me and you don't really like strategy games, or you just aren't great at them, just play as the Beastmen. They're about as simple as it gets, and you'll be able to experience a lot of the great things that the game has to offer. Anyways, I wish there were more Warhammer Fantasy games that I could recommend to you guys, but these two games are honestly going to allow you to experience the setting in the most immersive or best way possible. And I know that people are going to say, what about Warhammer Online, or what about Blood Bowl, but the reality is they're good, but they're not the best. Personally, I'm hoping that there's a good studio cooking up an Age of Sigmar game that's actually worth my time and money, and we'll see if anybody tries to develop a game set in the old world. If you've stuck around for this long, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you love Warhammer video games. This has been Jefficus, and I'll see you in-game.